Let's go to the last step of the DCOM configuration. Uh, this is step number five. Let's just go over the first four steps. In the first step, we remove the window security altogether. In the second step, we set the mutual account recognition on all PCs that use OPC. In the third step, we configured the system-wide DCOM settings. And in the fourth step, we actually configured the server-specific DCOM settings. Well. In this particular step, what we're going to do is to restore the window security and actually put it back. And uh, there are a few steps here. Number one is we're going to restore the Windows firewall that we turned off before. We'll configure the user and the group permissions. And last, we're going to uh, configure the data execution prevention, DEP. Remember, we also turned that off as well. Let's go to the first part, which is to restore the Windows firewall. Actually, fairly easy here. All we need to do is to uh, uh, put the firewall uh, back up again, and it's going to block uh, the um, uh, the unwanted traffic. Uh, but remember that this time, what we really need to do is to provide exceptions on two levels. Uh, first is the application level. A second is the port and protocol level. And don't forget that for DCOM, you need port number 135. So you need to set port 135. And uh, remember that OPC requires changes on both application level and port and protocol level to make sure the DCOM is actually working properly. Here's how you turn the firewall back on. Click on the Windows Start button and go to the control panel and from there go to the Windows Firewall. This time uh, turn on the Windows Firewall, so on recommended. Remember, remember that in the first step we actually turned it off, now we're going to turn security back on. Uh, so we turn it to on recommended. Now I also highlighted here the exceptions tab and that's where you'll have to go to set the exceptions for all the applications um, that, you, that uh, you'll be using. Uh, because the Windows Firewall, of course, is going to stop all the communication, but you'll need to fill out the appropriate exceptions. Second, we're going to configure the user and the group permissions. Again, rec uh, remember that in uh, step number three, when we configured the system-wide DCOM settings, what we did is we gave access to everyone, and we gave them access to launch and to access all the applications. Now, uh, what we have to do is to take that back because where is security? Everybody is allowed to uh, to launch and to start uh, and to access our, our data. So where is the security? It's not. So we have to put that security back in. So go back into the system-wide DCOM settings, and uh, now you have to take everyone off the list. So take everyone off and you have to add the specific users and the group that should actually get the uh, launch and the access permissions. Um, also don't forget to uh, set the server specific DCOM settings. Here uh, what you might want to do is to add uh, users and groups and you, want, you may want to do this system wide or you may want to do it for each individual server which the, the, the option that you choose really depends on you on whether you want to do to take this action system wide or whether you want to do it um, uh, for each server. It's really up to you. Third, the third step in here uh, when we restore the Windows uh, security is to configure dynamic ex pardon me, data execution prevention. So in here what you do is you right click on my computer on the my computer icon on your desktop and you uh, select the properties option. From here, as we've seen before, click on the advanced tab and go to the performance group. And here what you do is you click on settings just like we did before. This time though, in the data execution prevention, we're going to turn DEP on for um, uh, all programs and services except the ones I select. And here you'll need to add the affected OPC servers. Now I suggest you only go in here if, uh, pardon me, uh, you only need to add an OPC server if it's actually affected by uh, data execution prevention. If it is, go ahead and add it. If it's not being affected by data execution prevention, you really don't need to, you don't need to worry about it. And you can click on the on the add button and once you've added the OPC servers or clients or whatever applications that you need then you can click on the OK button and you're done configuring data execution prevention and you're actually also done uh, securing your uh, Windows operating system again